So welcome to giving Google and the search engines what they want. We're going to look at a couple of things today. Thank you for joining me. And what we're going to look at, well, the real purpose of the webinar is the two essential things that you have to do to get rank ranking for your websites. Everybody wants ranking, of course, and there are two absolute essentials. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll have a look at those. We're going to be looking at backlinks, which is one of the essentials. We're going to talk about the right way to do that. And we're going to talk about content, which is a secondary um, essential. They're both important, and we're going to look at the best way to do both of them. In all honesty, they're both pretty simple, but they do take time. No big surprise, they take time. Most things take time. But they're not complex to do, they're just time-consuming. And most people uh, tend to make these things a little bit more complex than they need to be. I'm hoping to show you simple things today that you can use in your own businesses. I also want to have a look at at least one or two little tricks that you might not have seen before. They're quite nice, little cute things to do. They can enhance your content a little bit. I want to talk about the lazy way to work. Now that's not just lazy, it's really known as working smarter, not harder. And that's quite important. And I want to talk about some of the things you should never do, because knowing that is as important as knowing the things you should do. Uh, now, I've just been asked whether I'll be able to give you the link before the hour is up. Um, should be able to get to that before then, Ken. Uh, if, I, if I've still got a lot to do, I'll slip the link in for you, because uh, I know you've got to leave, but I, thank you for joining me anyway. So the first thing I want to talk about is why do backlinks count? You may already know this. You may already know. Uh, but if you don't, let's just get into it a little bit. And, and, and before we do, why should you trust me? Because most of you have never met me. I know some of you have actually met me, but most of you haven't. And you may not be sure that I'm telling you the right thing. Well, fortunately, we can go straight to Google to find out whether backlinks actually count. So you can trust Google, at least as far as these answers are concerned. Now, there's a guy called Matt Cotts who works for Google. He's quite important. Uh, he talks about search all the time. He has a lot to say generally about search. In my view, a lot of it is unclear, and I think, personally, deliberately so, because that means you don't know how to game the Google system. But in this recent video, he answered the question of whether Google do not count backlinks in calculating search engine results. You may find his answers surprising, particularly because many people have claimed that linking is dead. So let's see what he has to say. I'm not going to play the video. I've actually got this as text because video doesn't work too well on a webinar. But let's actually look at the things he said on this specific video. So the first thing he says is that backlinks, for the most part, are still a really, really big win in terms of quality of search results. Backlinks are a really, really big win. I mean, that's a pretty clear statement, and it comes from Google. It comes from Matt Cutts at Google. Backlinks are a big win. He also says that backlinks relevance still really helps. Now, I'm going to come back to this word relevance a little bit later on, but again, this is a crystal clear statement. There's no if, no maybe. It definitely helps. So we can see already that backlinks are important. And the relevance issue, as I say, we'll look at that in a few moments, but that's something that I want to touch on because it does have an impact on how well you do with backlinks. He also says, in terms of making sure that we return the best, most relevant, most topical set of search results, in other words, backlinks, are really, really big, that was the previous statement, in terms of making sure that we return the best, most relevant set of search results. In other words, Google use backlinks to determine what to show searches. Backlinks still work. You can't get it from a better source than Google themselves. I know that many people have said that backlinking is dead and all that kind of thing, but the truth is most people overcomplicate this. When you're talking about search engine optimization, it's one of those things that people, for some reason, just compl complicate tremendously. That makes it hard to follow. It means it's hard work to do. And really, it doesn't work very well, because complex things never do. You see, there are tons of courses out there, tons of ebooks, tons of opinions. You've probably all seen several opinions about how to do backlinking and so on. And there are all kinds of difficult and compli uh, complicated schemes to follow. And this is just to get your site rankings. 
for a reason which I, I find difficult to understand, most of us actually believe that difficult things will work, but simple things don't work. And so we end up believing all this complex stuff. So simple really does work. And we've just had the answer from Google themselves about backlinks work. But I don't want to confuse complex with hard, okay? It is hard work to build thousands of links, but it isn't difficult and it isn't complex. It's just boring and it's hard work because you've got to do a lot of it. So what I've done in terms of backlinking, just for fun, I've had a look at some analysis of a couple of sites. Uh, I'm being asked how long the webinar. I don't know, Jay, it may be an hour, it may be two. It depends on how many questions I get and the as we go into the information, if people need to see things again. But generally speaking, uh, for a webinar like this, I would expect it to be at least an hour and possibly up to two hours. I'm going to try to get it in the 60 to 90 minutes mark for people because I know you're all busy. Um, but I don't want to cut things short and leave you with information missing. There will be a replay, of course. So just for fun, I'm doing an analysis here of the backlinks on msn.com. And if we have a look at this, you can see some numbers here. I'm going to zoom in in a second. They've got high page and domain rankings, which is not a big surprise. It's msn.com. But let's have a look at the backlinks that they've got. 323 million backlinks from 1.2 million domains. Well, you know, that's a lot of backlinks and it generates a lot of search engine power. Now, the figures here, this URL rank that we see here, and the domain rank, this is out of a potential of 100, and therefore the higher the figure, the better the site. You'd expect that from MSN, obviously. That's cool. Let's have a look at a little website that is related to the term weight loss. What I did, and again, this is for fun, I went through the search engine and I looked for a site well down the search engine rankings. This particular site is on page 14, which means it's, it's kind of nowhere. It's not a bad site. Okay, it's not a bad site at all, uh, but it's on page 14 of Google. Have a look at the figures for the backlinking for this particular site. So this particular site has very low backlinks to the specific page. It has low URL ranking. It's 18 out of 100. And you can see compared to MSN, the backlinking profile, as we call it, is very small. 31 backlinks out of 16 domains is very, very small. Now, in some cases, depending on your keyword, a small number of links may be okay. But for those bigger keywords that everybody wants to go for, you do need a little bit more uh, backlinking. And all other things being equal, and we'll talk about that as well, the site with better linking will generally do better. So the next thing I did was have a look at what was on page one for the term weight loss. Now, I didn't go for the absolute uh, top entry. I went for position number two on page one, and that is a Wikipedia entry for weight loss. So let's have a look at the uh, backlinking profile for that one. And this is on page one, position two. What they have is 78,000 backlinks from 7.2 thousand domains. And we've got you know, some social signals here as well. If we just go back, you can see the actual social signals. 18 Google Pluses, 43 Twitters, 16 Thumbs Up, uh, 120 Facebook Shares. If we look at the previous one, they've got some Twitter and, and liking and sharing going on. Very little going on with Google Plus, but the backlinks is very, very low. So even though they've got some social sharing going on, their backlinking profile overall is quite low. And when you compare that with Wikipedia, which has massive backlinking, massive domains linking, and we have the social stuff as well, even though the social signals, these things here, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, they're smaller than the site that was on page 14. So all other things being equal, the site with the biggest quality links is the one that is likely to do well. Backlinks do count, but you have to do them right. And one of the ways that you do backlinks correctly is by having variety of the type of link. I'll explain that more in a moment. Diversity in terms of things like your linking text. That's called anchor text, the actual hyperlink, the words used that become clickable. That has to be diverse as well. Quality of link. And again, when we get onto the section of quality, I'm going to expand on that. 
And it's got to be organic, or at least it has to look organic, and that means it's got to look like it's a natural linking profile. So, as for quality, remember that Matt Cotts from Google actually said that backlinks, relevance still really helps. So if you have a link that is not related to the topic of your money site, then it's not really a quality link. Because if you have content that is related to you, it is natural that it would link to you, and therefore you have this kind of organic quality. And so when you're putting out content and building your links, you kind of keep to need, need to keep everything within the same kind of topic area, because it's just a natural thing to do. And then the quality of the link can be enhanced, especially if you have quality content. We'll get into the content a little bit later. But the point about this is that for a link to be relevant, it really does have to have some kind of content that is related to your topic. Now, let me just expand on that, because this may not be obvious to every, everybody. Your backlinks require content. A link on its own is just a link. If it doesn't have any surrounding content, the value of that link is no longer what it used to be five years ago, two years ago, three years ago. Things have changed. Your backlinks have to give some kind of value to search engine visitors in and of themselves anyway. So even with backlinks, what Google is telling us is that content is king. Now, this is something you've heard all the time. Everybody, everybody hears this. Okay, just bear with me one second. I'm being asked a question which I'm going to deal with right now for you. Um, I know that everybody, some of you are very busy, so uh, let me just do this for you. I'm being asked for the link, and I'm going to get that for you. So I'm going to put the link in here, in the chat box. So anybody who's in a rush, there's the, there's the link for the content ferret. Okay. Uh, but there will be a replay, Tony, so you can find out all about the other things that we're we're covering uh, if you want to come back later and uh, I will send you an email with the link of course. So on the web content is king, something you've heard a lot. That means the backlinks have to be relevant and have to have some kind of content as well. So here's a rule number one, dead simple rule. You publish or distribute content that is related to your main money site topic. That's rule number one. That's it. So you see what I mean about some of these other people are overcomplicating. The rule is dead simple. It really is. I, I've got to be honest, it's boring to do it. You know, it takes time and effort, but it's simple to understand. When you're posting content, particularly content to build links, it needs to be related in some way to your money uh, or main money site topic. So that particular rule, which is a very simple one really, but it, it encompasses a lot of power, is that when you publish content or distribute it around the web, to get the most from it, it needs to be related in some way to your main money site topic. Now, if you have several money sites, of course, all on different topics, you do lots of different distributions. But if you're talking about a single money site, all the content that you distribute, whether it's for links or on the site itself, need to be related to that main money site topic. And again, we're actually going to look at that a little bit later. So rule number two, which again is real simple. It's absolutely dead simple. You vary the type of link you get. Okay, do not use the same kind of links all the time. Because, well, it doesn't really work. Um, you know, if you had the same links all the time. Let me just uh, start my slideshow again. because it's. Now, if you have the same type of links all the time, is not natural, it's not organic. So you must, you absolutely have to vary the type of links you get. Uh, and again, it's a little bit of work, but you know, that's one of the things that will distinguish success from failure, that little bit of effort. Now, um, I'm being asked for some examples. Okay, just bear with me one second, because uh, I just want to restart my slideshow because I've just got a slight problem. There we go. So the type of link that you would use has to be different types of links. Let me explain this. If you get a link by commenting on a blog, that's one type of link. Great, that's good. And you can do that very easily. If you get a link from an article directory where you post an article, that's a different type of link. If you get a link from one of these places called document sharing sites where you can upload a, a PDF, 
That's a different type of link. If you have a link from a forum profile, that's a different type of link. Now, in the old days, it was dead simple. You get one type of link, get a million of them, and you'd be on page one. But it doesn't work anymore. So the rule number two that I mentioned is that you're going to vary all your links. Don't make them all the same color and size and weight. You know, change them. Don't do the same thing all the time. Because the only people who do that is people who can't be bothered and are looking for an easy dollar. And Google really don't want to reward those people these days because it doesn't add anything to the search engine experience. Okay. Um, Tony, that's not available for a week. Um, and that will be, I think, the 8th of March. Now, I've been asked about the title of the article by Sean. So, the title of your articles needs to be varied, the content needs to be varied, and the clickable link from articles to your money sites also needs to be varied as well. But that's just talking about articles. You also need other types of links, such as blog comments, uh, forum postings, forum profiles, what we call Web2 properties and so on. And we'll actually look at, uh, you know, at least one or two of those later. Um, and I've been asked by Jill, with a forum profile, there may be no content. Well, on a forum profile, you can put a, a little bit of a bio about yourself, some biographical information, so there will be some content. But remember that it doesn't have to be a spammy link. Okay, you don't have to put a really massive keyword in there that's a, a mega money keyword. And so all these links need to be varied in terms of type, but also in terms of weight. Because if you only ever get top profile, absolute mega money keyword links, that looks very suspicious. <laughs> it's really suspicious. A normal linking profile will have some wasted links, some links that really don't mean anything. It will have some links of just your name. It will have some links of uh, maybe your site URL. That's a normal and organic style of linking profile. And that's one of the things that people do wrong because they can't be bothered. What people do is they use a single type of link and do it all the time because it's easier. And therefore, it doesn't work. Okay. Now, if you put in a little bit of effort and you ring the changes in terms of link types, link placements, linking text, and so on, that starts to look more organic. And therefore, because it looks more organic, it will carry a little bit more weight with Google because they're not likely to think that you're trying to spam them. In other words, if you're giving real content out there, it's more likely to do better than spammy, junky content because... The search engines don't want that anymore. It's a very simple rule, really. I've got a follow-up question about the article name, which is uh, the article name would be the same as your anchor li link. It depends on where you post it. In most cases, the answer is yes. But an article name is not always the same as the anchor link text. It depends on where you post it and how you configure it. So again, that's more diversity and more variety, which is a really good, it's a powerful tool. So I've talked a little bit about links. I'm going to show you some in a moment. Um, but I want to ask you a question, which is about these links. And the question is this. Okay. What good are the links if they lead to a page like this? I've created this sample page that has nothing on it. Now, if you landed there, what would you do? Would you spend a lot of time on that page? And I think the answer is no, because there's nothing there. It's empty. The point of links, remember, is to get people to your website by getting higher in the search engine rankings. And when they get there, boy, you'd better deliver something, okay? And you'd better deliver something that interests them because if you don't, they're leaving. If you go to a page like that, you're not going to spend 20 minutes there thinking about my value proposition. You're going to leave. So the links are wonderful, but you have to send people to a page with some kind of content, okay? Which means if you generate web traffic and you get lots of it, that's great, absolutely great. But if you then dissipate that traffic, you waste it. It's a complete waste of time and effort and money, usually. You will lose revenue opportunity if you allow your site visitors to go away empty-handed, okay? So backlinks are vitally important to get your site ranked. But content is actually preeminent. Okay? There's no point having links 
until you've got some good content on your money sites. Because links are pointing back to something and that something is going to be content. And the content is where your site visitors will land. If you don't give them the content that's of interest to them, they're not going to stick around. So as a silly example, if I got you onto a page talking about weight loss with all my links, and when you got to the page it was all about golf shoes, most of you are going to disappear from that page very quickly. There might be one in a thousand who just happens to be interested in golf shoes, but you're going to feel cheated. You're going to wonder why I've wasted your time going to a page that's got nothing to do with weight loss. Um, the, the page you end up on really needs to be related to all the linking that you've done, and it has to be some kind of valuable content to keep people there. Okay, so backlinks are vitally important, but the content is actually preeminent. Now I want to show you a traditional way of creating some content. So we're going to switch to a live demo um, and what we'll do is do this totally manually. So we're not going to spend a cent for this. We're going to go to Google, we're going to do some research and uh, you know then we'll, uh, we'll do some actual work. So I'm actually going to go to Google now if I can spell it and as I say it's pretty cold so you have to bear with me and I'm going to look for weight loss. Now, that's a lot of results, 391 million results. Even if I put this into quotes to get an exact match, I'm going to get 64 million results. So that's a lot of potential research, and I can look through the various sites on page one and read what they say, and then I can decide whether that material is suitable as research, then I copy snippets, look at them in more depth, and finally I do some editing. This is actually as boring to do as it is to watch, but let me actually start by doing this. So, um, I'm not going to go for anything that's really topical like these, because they, they may go off the first page when they're not hot stories anymore, but you could certainly take advantage of the fact that these pieces of information are kind of trending at the moment. So let's have a look. I'm in the UK. Uh, this one would be relevant to the UK. Here's the Wikipedia one that we looked at earlier that was on page two, uh, with the massive number of links. Uh, women's fitness, well that's specific to women. So let's have a look at this one, weight reduction, how to lose weight. I'm going to have a look at this and see if this is the kind of information that I could use as the basis of research. So now I've got to read through it. Uh, and that obviously would take a few minutes. Uh, weight loss, simple, it depends how much energy you take in, how much energy your body uses. That's not true by the way. Uh, everybody thinks it is, but it's not. Okay, so I've got some bully points about uh, lose weight by eating less calories. Okay, very simple, straightforward information. Here's a piece of information that is useful to tell people. You have to burn 3,500 uh, 3, calories to lose a pound of fat. Yeah, I'd certainly want to be looking at that as uh, information. So let me get my Word document open, and then when I've done that, I'll just resize this. So I can copy and paste, of course. And I'm going to do this for each snippet that I'm seeing. I'm quite liking this. That's important information because many people, you know, people want to lose weight tomorrow, don't they? Uh, and wake up slim, but it just doesn't happen. It's important advice, I think. And then we we'll go through more. There's a nice tip. It's a stupid one, uh, but, you know, I could even use that and say it's a stupid tip because there are more complex issues. So what I can do to remind myself is I can put a controversial argument in there. Then we talk about lifestyle changes. I like that because that is another thing that's important to do with weight loss. It's a lifestyle change, not a change just today. Then before you start, we've got to talk about motivation. Yeah, again, good points. And what I would do is work through as many of the sites on here as I want to. Have a look at them. Uh, Huffington Post, let's have a look at that one that sometimes has interesting stories. Uh, in this case, children eating healthier. That might be relevant because very often overweight people tend to pass on the bad heat eating habits to their children. So I actually want to uh, use that as a topic. And what I'm doing is I'm building up some topics here. Oh, oh cool. Now there's not enough there to do a real article. Okay, just not enough to do a real article. But it is some research where I would then go and edit 
I can't just use this wording as is because that's copyright infringement, but what I can do is use it as the basis of my research. And by the time I've spent a couple of hours doing this, I will have seen 5, 10, 20 sites. I can get some really good uh, snippets of information. And then I get to the exciting part where I start rewriting. So motivation is crucial. So I'd rewrite the title of that paragraph. The importance of great motivation. Something like that, okay? To lose weight and keep it off, you must be motivated. Yeah, okay. I would rewrite that and put something like, without the right kind of motivation, you will never succeed in losing weight and keeping it off. So it's essentially the same idea, but I'm putting it in, into my own wording. And you can see we'd go through each of these pieces of information, each of these snippets. Now, I could spend an hour rewriting this in front of you, and it would be very boring for you to watch. Is everybody getting the idea of what I'm showing you? I really don't want to spend an hour of your time actually doing 20 sites and reading through them and then rewriting because it's, uh, yeah. Okay, everybody's saying move on. Good, you're getting the point. Okay. As I said, it isn't complex work. It's not difficult, it's just boring and it is hard work. Okay? It's boring, it's hard work. So what I want to do now, we'll stick with this demonstration. I want to show you the smart way, which is the modern way, the efficient way. Also this thing called, you know, the, the work smarter, not harder. So what I'm just going to do is log into my Content Ferret account. And I'll just pause the screen while I do that. Okay, so as you can see, what we have is a whole bunch of topics here. And that particular list is going to be added to, and there will be more added in the next few uh, weeks. But right now I'm going to show you with this particular list because we're kind of in the, the pre-public launch, okay? So I'm going to stick with weight loss because I, I like weight loss. I know about it. I know uh, the topic inside out, and therefore I can see what's good quality and so on. It's easier for me to deal with it than something I've never dealt with, like Forex training, for example. Now, when we choose a topic, we get all these subtopics here, and there's 25 listed, but we also have paging so that we can look for more and more and more. And within each of these subtopics, there are uh, articles and snippets that we can use. So let me just go back to the main weight loss page again. There we go. What I'm going to do is build up some information snippets relating to weight loss. And I'm going to do it fairly quickly, and then I'll be ready to rewrite and edit the research. I'm going to show you how this will give you ideas for the structure of your article, because these topics in themselves will suggest sequences to you. They will suggest subparagraphs and subsections. So losing weight is, you know, that would be an obvious starting point. So let me start there, losing weight. Um, Christine, the, the screen's not frozen. I just haven't done anything for a few seconds, but I've clicked on it now. You should see it moving. It should be like an animated circle here. So what it's doing is looking for all the topics that it's got, all the snippets related to losing weight. Now, there's going to be quite a few. Uh, and that will appear there in a moment. Okay, is the screen changing for everybody? Because what I've got now are 2,411 results. Now, in reality, you wouldn't actually uh, look through all of them. You know, you'd choose the ones you like. So, uh, this first one I quite like, apart from it's talking about green coffee bean extract. I'm not interested in that. Um, I like this first snippet. That's a nice one. I'm going to click on Save, and it goes into my snippet box here. Okay, uh, and we'll just add a few more. I'm just going to quickly flick through, see the ones that I like. Uh, I like that one because this is talking about mindset, like we were just mentioning a moment ago. And I can keep building up through that. We've got healthy loss here. So let me save that. Uh, sticking to it. Okay, that again. I like that. But it's talking about some important factors, and I can't see them. Well, if I click on Source, I can see what those factors were. So I quite like this first paragraph. 
Um, I like the idea of planning ahead. That's a very, very long paragraph. Too much for Lord of Want. Conquer your fear. Don't make excuses. I quite like that one. Okay. So I've added a couple more snippets in there, and this is what they look like right now. So I've got the losing weight subtopic that we started with, 457 words of research. Okay. And then here's the actual research snippets. Now, if I want to, I can continue building up snippets. So let's have a look. Green tea, no, I'm not interested. Let's look at burning fat, because that might be of interest to somebody who wants to learn uh, how to lose weight quickly. Because it's, it's burning the fat we want rather than losing muscle mass, isn't it? So, uh, okay, fastest way to burn fat, get a healthier taste for food. I like that, yeah. Goji berries, now that's great, because that would actually lead on to uh, the ability to promote an affiliate product, because that's something that's quite, you know, one of those popular things. So let me save that as well. Losing weight quickly as possible. I don't like that personally. Uh, okay. Oh, I do like this one. A lot of people say I've been eating not much food, but I'm not losing weight, and that's denial. So let me put that in as well. So I'm building up these snippets. It's really only taking a few seconds. And what I've got now is 733 words of content, and we've got some subsections and so on. Okay, so I'm getting a couple of questions which I'm going to take in a moment, so if you can bear with me, uh, I'll come back to these questions in a moment, and when there's a natural pause, um, I'll actually answer those for you. So what I've done is I've assembled some research very, very quickly. I'm ready to rewrite this, okay? Now I can do that from directly within the interface, and the interface works on Mac, and Windows. You could even do this on a tablet if you wanted to. Uh, and we've got this fairly straightforward rewrite pane here where it guides you through. So each of the individual paragraphs you can rewrite it in your own words here, put in the title and introduction and so on. And that's cool. When I've done that I've got some content and that's all cool but you still know, need those links. Remember? And I said we'd talk about this. Well, to get a link, and a quality link, which is what Google are looking for, remember we saw what Matt Cutts said, we need to put out more content online in places like article directories, document repositories, blog comments, feeder sites, and so on. So that means we need even more comment, uh, content to generate those links. So what I can do, if I'm having this as something for my main money site, I can go through the same process again, choose any of the other snippets, and build up different articles. And then I can generate some content that I can use to distribute for linking purposes. Now, Google is not very keen these days on the same content being used all over the place. Okay, you can't just put one piece of content in a million places and have it work. It just doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work. You have to distribute enormous amounts of content relevant to your topic to get links back to your money site. Well, guess what? It's the same technique. We just go through the topics and subtopics. I'll show you some others in a moment. Choose different snippets of information, combine the snippets from different uh, subcategories, and then you've got related content to your main point. Okay? Yes, there is a recording there. So, first things first, I've got some content here, which I'm ready to use. It's 733 words of research. Now, what happens if you're not very skilled at editing, or you're too busy? Or even if you just don't want to do that, if you want to concentrate on other things? The idea of editing hundreds of articles might not sound like a lot of fun. So there's a couple of different things you can do, okay? First thing we can do is this little button down here, which is spin the research. What that will do is create a Spintax version of this research. Now, Spintax is a special format that can then generate multiple versions for you using a tool like the Best Spinner. You can use uh, other tools as well that have that spinning ability within them. This produces the spin format for you. And that generation of multiple versions can then be used to farm out for your links. Okay, So the spin research is particularly useful for when you're wanting to create multiple versions to use for link building purposes. It's a great starting point, it's minimal effort, so I'm going to show you in a moment 
Brooks, they sound, uh, I think everybody else can hear me. It's certainly uh, showing us being there. If you, I don't know whether you're going to get the sound back in a moment, but uh, hopefully you will. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just click spin the research. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like, because this will download in a moment. So it's now using the spinner, the best spinner, and it's creating snippets. Let me just call this spun so I remember which one it is. If I open this, I'll show you what it looks like. This is what it now looks like, and I can put that into the best spinner, if I have the best spinner. I can submit this into article directories or blog networks that accept spin comments and, and spin content if I want to. I can work on it some more to tighten it and make it better. I'm getting a question, a very good question. Google can detect spun content and they don't like it. Is that true? Yes. It is true. But the real part is that what's true is that they can detect badly spun content. If you use any automated tool, let me repeat that, if you use any automated tool without any effort whatsoever, Google can tell. If you're lazy enough to do that, you're not going to do well in the search engines. The people who do that are the people who want to put in no work and make a ton of money not going to happen. The people who do well with these things keep quiet about it, and what they do is they spend a little bit of time and effort to work, and then they get the benefit. So if you spend two hours creating a single article normally, or you spend two hours in a spinner and create 20 articles that are really good quality, the two hours on the spinning was worth doing because you get much more value from your time than doing everything manually. But here's the thing. The average person won't bother doing that. Okay? The average person will not bother doing that. They'll click the button, do everything on auto, and then they won't get the benefit and they'll wonder why. And then you'll hear them saying spinning doesn't work. Oh, yes, it does. Spinning works. Backlinking works. Bad spinning doesn't work, bad backlinking doesn't work, bad content doesn't work. But quality still works. And quality, sad to say, is going to take you some time or it take you some money if you want to get somebody to do it for you. So let me just move this out of the way for a moment. So what we did was we, we uh, put that as a spin. Let's get rid of that. Um, and if I look at the snippets again, this is the original snippets without the spin. Now, I did say that if you really don't want to spend the time to do this yourself, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get a human edited, rewritten, unique piece of content. It's a couple of clicks. So down at the bottom here, we have this option to send this to ineedarticles.com if you're a member at ineedarticles.com. You can get it rewritten. So let me just click on here. And then I'm going to put in my weight loss primary keywords, which weight loss. Uh, Ken's asking how long the link will be active. That will be active, um, as far as I know, Ken, for the next week. Or it may be Monday. I'm not sure, in all honesty. Uh, it may be until Monday. I, I don't know. But certainly it will be active at least over the weekend. And then I have to put in my um, article uh, API key here, which I've got to freeze the screen. Okay, so I'll just do that while I put in my key. So just bear with me while I do that. And for obvious reasons, the API key is, is rather sensitive. So I'm just uh, freezing the screen while we do that. Uh, and then I'm going to answer a couple of questions. And what I'm doing is choosing a 500 word count. And I'm submitting the article request. And that is now in Article Builder, which I'm going to log into. Uh, I beg your pardon, I need articles. I'm going to log into that and actually show you, and then I'll unfreeze the screen for you. I'll show you the dashboard. So let me just unfreeze the screen again. And that should appear in a couple of seconds, then I'll handle a couple of questions for you. Okay, so these were articles I did earlier in testing, but this is the one that I've just submitted. 
It's 500 words. It's going to be rewritten for me. When it's been done, I'm going to show you it. I'll put it into Copyscape. We'll check that it's unique. It's going to be $3.50. That's pretty cheap for a 500 word article to be rewritten and unique. Now, let me just go through some of these questions. If an article is well spun, can it be used on money sites? The answer is yes, if it is well spun. I'm going to tell you the secret to spinning well. You put in some effort or you pay somebody to do it for you. It's, it's as easy as that. The people who churn out junk will get the results they expect. They'll get junk results, okay? If you spin badly, you get bad results. If you spin well, you get good results. Okay, so um, can content generated here be used on money sites? Yes, it can as long as you've edited it, yes. And let's have a look. Who can I pay to spin my article? Um, good question, Patrick. I mean, there are lots of people, but, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend any person in, in particular because I, I spin my own and I, I haven't... Well, I've used a couple of people for spinning in the past, and it's difficult to find somebody, um, you know, for a reasonable price who's good at it because it's such um, a particular skill. I think it pays to learn how to do it yourself because every hour you spend on it will give you the equivalent of multiple hours of normal work. Okay? And if you do want to get somebody to spin it for you, then a little bit of research, but, you know, I, I don't have any names to recommend for you. Um, okay, so uh, this is limited to the categories that we've shown. Yes, it is. That's right. Um, it is. I'm going to come on to that in a moment as well, because there's something else that uh, comes on comes into this, which will kind of expand category research. But in terms of content for it itself, the categories that are going to be in there are going to be all the popular ones. So if you have a particularly unique niche, which is a little bit unusual, this may not be for you, but all the big niches in here are covered. Okay? So, normally, I need articles, you'd expect the results to be returned within about 24 hours. Okay? I'm hoping we'll get them back before we finish the webinar. It is a live demo though, so anything could happen. If I don't get them back by the end of the webinar, I will put them in the replay. So whatever happens, you will be able to see them. But I have asked the writers at ineedarticles.com to be on standby for me, hopefully to do the rewrites pretty quickly, just so that I can show you what they're like. Okay? Uh, just so that you can see what they're like. Now, I Need Articles, uh, you can join it for free, and you only pay if you're actually having rewrites done. Uh, I'm getting a ton of questions here, so what I want to do is just deal with them for a moment and then continue. So let me just... Bear with me uh, for a second. What are the differences between Content Ferret, I need, uh, uh, I, <laughs> Content Ferret, Instant Article Wizard, and Article Builder? Um, Instant Article Wizard, which I'll show you a little bit later, requires a bit more work. It's a bit more manual. Article Builder is pre-built snippets that you can use as is. Um, but then so can lots of other people. And content for it is snippets that you would take for research, rewrite and edit, and turn into something unique. It's a great way of doing the research quickly. And because it's got, well, there's over a million articles in there now, which is probably tens of millions of snippets. It's a huge amount of content for all these big, big topics. Okay. Now, I've got a question which is a long one, so I've just got to read this. Each article created by INeedArticles.com is for one post. Yes, that's right. So if you wanted 20 unique articles, you would need to order 20 uh, jobs from INeedArticles.com. Um, but what I would normally do, this is kind of rule number three if you like, I would have it rewritten to be unique one time for the money site, so you've got the good quality content on there, and then I would probably start with the spin tax that we can get from here. Let me show you that again, using this, to generate multiple articles. It might need a little bit of cleanup, you know, um, which I could then use for the link building. Okay, I wouldn't use 20 absolutely totally unique articles for link building. Um, they can be, they can have certain degrees of similarity. They've got to be good articles and they can't be totally copied. 
Um, but you don't need quite the same degree of uniqueness if you're putting it on linking. And then there's various uh, tiers of linking as well, so it can kind of get complex there. Um, but in a general sense, I would get the really best quality one on my money site, and then I'd want good quality ones for the linking. Good quality, okay? Not poor quality, good. doesn't have to be absolutely stellar quality for your linking, but it does have to be good. Um, okay, I'm getting so many questions I'm struggling to keep up, so if you bear with me one second. Uh, did I give I need articles the spin article with syntax? No, I gave them the basic one here. Okay. How about uh, local niches? No, uh, it doesn't really cover that. And you want to see the list of topics? Okay, this is only a partial list at the moment, and it's going to be building over the next few weeks. Uh, and I'm going to show you the second empty box in a moment, Diane. Haven't got to that just yet. David asking me, um, I've said previously that 80% unique was the best content. It depends what you're doing with it, David. For your money site, I would say, you know, ideally go for 100%. For linking, it depends on where you link. Okay? Um, it really depends on where you link and how you link. You can reduce the uh, uniqueness. I mean, there isn't an absolutely dead accurate formula for that. But good quality, reasonable uniqueness, that's the trick. Okay, um, some examples. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, but I'll come back to that if you can expand on that for me, David. Uh, where should I put the good quality article? Well, I would put that a good quality article I would put on your your money site as a post or a page. And you're wanting to see the home improvement? Where is that? Oh, here we go. Okay. So what we've got on home improvement is various things here. Solar panels, solar energy, renewable energy, swimming pool, wind power. And we can page through, of course. Patio furniture, bedroom furniture, home theatre, water damage, quite a few there. Okay. Let's just go through some more. Air conditioner, light bulbs, water filter, drinking water. That's quite a lot of different stuff. But let me show you something else. Uh, home improvement. So let's do... Uh, anything to do with garage for home improvement where the word garage is in the article title. Let's see what we get when I click the research button now. So what I can do is drill down into the content. Now, where do you put the various lesser unique articles? Well, you can use snippets for blog commenting. I will have a look at a blog in a moment and we'll, we'll look at commenting. You can create short reports which you can put onto document repositories, uh, the, the document sites and so on. So look at that, I've got 5,216 snippets to do with garage and home improvement and that's where the keyword is in the title. If I do that without the keyword in the title, let's see how many we get while I look at the questions again. Content Ferret cannot search outside the categories that are showing here, but there are more categories being added over the next week. But once the category list is complete, it will not search outside it. Now I'm skipping ahead a little bit, um, but Instant Article Wizard can do that. Okay, I'll tell you why in a few minutes why, why I'm talking about Instant Article Wizard. I, I kind of trying to keep it on track, but uh, you'll, you'll see how that makes sense in a moment. Um, are there any upsells? No. No. Can you suggest categories? Uh, you can, Diane. In all fairness, I don't know, you know, how elastic it is. I mean, if there's a really good category, it may be added, you know. Um, Will is asking if there's any spinability within Content Ferret itself. If I show you the snippets again and choose to spin the research, what we will get, I'm just going to download this. Uh, well, we already had the spawn snippets from before, so let me open that one again, um, which was over here. This will create spin format for you, but it doesn't create the variation. For that, you would use something like the best spinner, which I'll show you now, uh, or any other spinner tool if you have one of those. So I'm just logging into the best spinner, and I'll put this in and then show you. I'm just going to copy this. 
and then I'm going to put this into the best spinner which I'll drag over to show you there we go and copy it in so I've copied in the spin tax that we got from content ferret and now what we can do is we can have a look at the variations that we could get and remember you would need to do a little bit of editing and cleaning up and that's one of the things that distinguishes people who, who succeed from people who don't the people who fail at this do no work at all okay if you do no work your results will be lousy if you spend a few minutes tidying things up you're going to get better results and better results translate into better search engine rankings so i'm just doing a new spin and you can see that it's changing yeah so you would need something like the best spinner uh, i'll just get rid of that something like the best spinner to actually generate the unique articles but Content Ferret will create the spin tax format for you, that special format that has the variations embedded within it. Uh, is the screen changing for you? Is it frozen for everybody? Now, Content Ferret itself is web based, so you can use this with a PC and Mac, and you can also even use it on a tablet if you wanted to. So let me just quickly see if this has been rewritten for me. Normally, it would be up to 24 hours in INeedArticles.com. But I'm just going to check if it's been done. Not yet, so we'll come back in a few minutes. Uh, great suggestion, Linda. I mean, I'll put that forward as a suggestion, recreation as a category, but you know, I, I can't compare this to GSA because I've never used that product, so I don't know. Never used it, don't know. Um, I can only tell you what this one does. So I'm going to come back and look for the rewritten article in a couple of minutes. But what I want to do now is just remove these articles. I can do it from here, as you can see. Just click on the snippet you want to remove. Click on Remove, and it comes out. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, start, start a new article. And let me work on the basis of, oh, fitness or nutrition sounds a good one to me. Let me take that out. So I'm going to now do related topics to weight loss. Nutrition is definitely related. So I'm now building up extra content that I can use in a variety of ways. Remember what I said to you earlier? With linking, you need a lot of content. The links that you create need some kind of supporting content. So now what I'm doing, I'm looking for related content to weight loss that I can start to use to build those links. So let's have a look. Vitamin C, healthy eating, fatty acids. Um, free radicals. Okay, I'm going to go with processed foods first because I know they're not particularly good for you. And so that's a good starting point. Um, I do list, yeah, I, I do use that particular plugin. Yep. I'm being asked if I use a particular plugin. Bob is asking, uh, would you use the spin researching content ferret to create a spin format text and then put it into the best spinner to create a uh, a spun version of the article? Yes, you can, but I would definitely emphasize a little bit of editing work to clean it up makes the difference. Now, you could edit the entire spin text format or you could edit the article that you generate, but the few minutes that you spend doing that really does make a difference to the, the benefits that you get. So we're looking at processed foods, 1600 plus matching snippets. Um, okay, I quite like this one, but I don't want it as the first one. Uh, I like this one as the first one. I like this one as the second one. Uh, and I like that. That makes a lot of sense to me. And yeah, I'm liking it as we see this particular sequence. Now let's have a look. So let me also go to blood sugar because that can be affected by processed food, lots of salt and sugar and bad things in processed food. I'm just going to create a few snippets here, send it off for rewriting, show you what it's like when that's being rewritten. Uh, I'll show you the source in a moment. Yeah, absolutely will do. Um, okay, so this is just uh, giving me over 2,000 snippets. Uh, I like the first one, and I like the second one a lot, and the third one, okay. Well, I've got seven snippets there. That's not really, um, you know, it's not really a full article. Um, I'd want to have some kind of a conclusion, but 
for the purposes of demonstration, 459 words of research is good enough. I'm going to have to freeze the screen again while I send this to I Need Articles. So let me do that. And I'm only freezing it because it shows my uh, personal API key. But I'm going to send this to I Need Art uh, I Need Articles com, and I'm looking for 500 words. And the keyword I'm going to put in here is healthy nutrition. And healthy nutrition is definitely related to weight loss, right? I mean, that's a related topic, okay? So now, let me show the screen again and just make sure that you can see that. I'll wait for the screen to catch up. And if I reload the page now, what you'll see is that I've got a couple of articles in the queue. The first one was the one that I did for weight loss, which I would put as something on my money site. And the second one I'd use as the basis for starting links, perhaps. So I need articles.com. Uh, let me give you that link in the chat box. So that's where you can have articles written or rewritten. Um, Hopefully somebody will pick that up from the queue and finish this for me fairly quickly. And now let me get back to your questions before we go on to some other things that I want to show you. I promised you a couple of little tricks. I want to show you those in a moment, but I want to get to the questions first. Uh, can I show you a sample of the source? Yes, I can. So if we look at the source here, we see the entire origin, original article. And we can, you see all these snippets, we can choose any of them. Uh, this is written in the first person. I probably wouldn't use any of that. I might use that one. Yeah, blood sugar. Yeah, okay, that's quite a good one. Uh, and so on. And then we can do the same with some of the others. Uh, let me just look at the glycemic index because index, that is related to blood sugar levels. You see here, what I'm getting is a ton of related content. These topics are related, so they're automatically suggesting extra content for me. They're suggesting structures for me. They're suggesting related content. And all of that means I can build up this profile that Google likes. This profile is having content that is related to your money site topics. It's information that's related to what you're talking about because people searching are going to want that information. If you search for weight loss, you're probably not going to be looking at toy helicopters. You're looking for things about weight loss, healthy nutrition, diet plans. Okay, it's just plain obvious sense. It's very, very simple stuff, this. But a lot of people miss this because when they do the research, it's hard work. And pulling out these, there's a fancy term for this. It's called LSI, Latent Semantic Index. It's a fancy term to mean related topics. This is all done for you within the interface. And remember, it works on Mac and PC, so whatever system you work on, you're good to go. So, uh, let me just scroll through the questions again. Uh, good question, Eric. There is a fee for rewriting the snippets if you use INeedArticles.com. Uh, the ones I've written, the 500 article ones, are $3.50, for example. Um, so that's not included within Content Ferret. Why didn't I choose the rewrite service with I Need Articles to save money? Um, I did. Uh, I did. Um, you, one person wanting a service for submitting articles to article directories. Okay, that's kind of outside the scope of what we're looking at today. But yeah, I mean, when you've got a lot of articles written and created for you, then submitting them uh, is a task in itself. Lots of people can do that for you, um, you know. But it's kind of outside what we're looking at today. Uh, okay, a good question from Bob, which is a big question. Can I give you a list of the products and services you need to create a winning article and backlinks with Content Ferret? I'll add that in the replay, Bob. Um, I couldn't possibly cover it right now because it's going to take me too long and we're already into an hour and we're not, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got a lot to cover uh, and I'm wanting to show you some of these cute little tricks. Yes, there will be a replay. Um, can we automate the rewritten articles using Article Builder? Not sure what you mean by that, Patrick. I think the answer will be no, but I'm not sure what you mean. Martin, how does I need articles compared to Fiverr gigs quality-wise? 
My personal experience with Fiverr is very poor. My personal experience with I Need Articles is good, sometimes superbly good. Um, there are ways to uh, ask for extra levels of quality within I Need Articles, but Fiverr, I, I don't get content from Fiverr anymore. Uh, yes, we will provide a link for the replay, Ken. We'll definitely send that out via email. Uh, okay. No, it doesn't seem like an hour, and we haven't touched things yet, have we? Okay. I'm just going to quickly see if we've got some articles rewritten yet, and if not, then we'll move on to something I want to show you, which is... I think it's cool. Okay. Here's a snippet of information. 583 words. Now... If you have a blog in particular where you want to put some nice graphics or you want to put in some graphics with your short reports and so on or your videos and I'm going to talk about videos later let me show you a little trick I'm actually just copying and pasting from here but you can download the snippets into your computer of course for permanent use and normally you would download them to your computer I'm not doing that because this is just a demonstration, but you would normally do that to keep the snippets safe for future use. If we go to this website, and I will give you a link to it, in here I can paste that content, and I may need to post it a couple of times to get 5,000 characters. If I don't get 5,000 characters, it will tell me. I just post it a couple more times uh, by copying and pasting. Yeah. Then when I click visualize your text, it's going to go off for a couple of seconds and do some really clever stuff in the background. And the image this is about to produce for me, I can use on my website, I can use in my reports, I can even sell the images if I want to. Now it is a live demo and it looks like this may be actually uh, playing up or it may be just going slow. So while that's working, I'm going to show you the list of categories because I've been asked that. So this is the current list of categories that we have. There will be more by the time uh, next week comes around. But this is what we have so far. There's over a million articles in there. Uh, and this isn't working, is it? So let me just go back and reload that page. And there we go. So what I've got now, I'm going to go slowly on this because I want to show you a couple of things. It's creating several different types of graphic this graphic becomes yours to do with what you like. There are people who sell graphics like this on the stock photography sites. Graphics like this are actually being bought for money, even though it takes five seconds to produce them. Now what it's done, let me scroll down, is it's analysed the frequency of the words within the article. Have a look at the biggest words here. Sugar, blood, foods, processed. This is a visual representation of your article. And what I can do is download this. I can put it on my blog. I will show you that. If you give me a couple of minutes, I'll show you. Um, but I can tweak this. I can change the colors. I've got a ton of different options. This is all free, by the way. This site is free. I wish it were mine. It's not, but... <laughs> okay, so uh, we've got layout, font, colors. If you don't like that font, change it. Let's change this to... Ooh, um... Share tech mono. Yeah, okay, I quite like that. Not sure about the colors. Uh, let's just change the colors. We've got some color schemes here. And I could look at something that's a little bit more like my website, of course. So if, if I had a particular scheme, I could get something a little bit closer to my particular site. Let's go for that one. Mm, no, I don't like that one. This one, which is mainly blues. What about uh, this one here? No, not loving those colors. And you can have a lot of fun spending all day doing this if you want to. You can just take the automatic colors, you know, in fairness. Uh, I'm going to go with this top one because I like that. And then with the advanced, I can change the way they calculate the word frequency. Uh, the layout, we've got all kinds of options here. Now, have a look at this one, vertical and horizontal. I like this one personally. Look at that. Okay, now, if I share this and choose download, if you're getting bad audio, hopefully um, you will, it will recover itself, but uh, you may need to wait for the replay. What I've got here is the image. 
right click, save image as. I'm going to save this as Word Cloud One. Hopefully, you can hear me now. Let me know if the audio is bad, everybody. I've now saved that. Okay. I'll go back and show you. I'll come away from there. So, when you've created the Word Cloud, we go to Share. Come down to PNG, and then we right click, save image as, and then just call it whatever name you want to call it. I called mine Word Cloud One, but you'd call it whatever you want. So I've got to log in, so I'm going to freeze the screen again. Just bear with me, everybody. I'm going to actually make a post and show you what it looks like. Okay, so let me log in. And on this particular website, there's nothing on there, but, you know, I'm going to put an, an example post and show you how I could use that particular image I've just created. Now, I can create dozens of those images in minutes. I could even sell them. I could even sell them with articles. Okay, so let's have a look. We'll do a page, add new. Hopefully, you can all see the screen again. Sample Word Cloud Image. So, in the post, I'm going to add media. Let's do that. And we're going to select a file. We're going to choose the image we've just saved. Click on Open. I'm going to do this slowly so you can all see. Then we've got this image here. We have some options on the right-hand side. The alignment, I like left, but you can put center, right, whatever you want. You can link to whatever you want. I normally link to nothing for an image like this, and you can choose the size. Now, full size would be way too big, okay? But WordPress has created a smaller one for me, and I'm going to click into the page here. And then, all I do is start typing some text. If I can type, I've got cold fingers. See, I can't type too <laughs> Let me just check something. Uh, okay, I've just made a slight mistake because of the way I typed it. Not to worry. So if I publish this page now, and then I'm going to show you the page, and you can go to this page if you want to look at it live. I'm going to put this in the chat box. So if you wanted to, you can see that. I've got an image here, and that's free, and I can create as many of them as I want to. Okay, if I go to create again, Go back to Content Ferret. If I add some more content, so let's do complex carbohydrates. Let's have a look what happens. And I'm just going to add these in very quickly. For the purpose of generating an image, I don't even mind what the content is. So for image creation, any of this would be fine. GI, that's the glycemic index, isn't it? So let's put that in. Let's take this snippet now. Put it back into this special place. And visualize my text text and the images that are created here are yours to do with as you please you can sell them ah I've got a really good question here does the word cloud image increase your on-page SEO score good question Charles um, the short answer is yes the long answer would take me too long to explain why there's a couple of things you would have to do with them uh, but yeah uh, images done the right way yeah now, in some cases, I might link these images to other things like payment buttons or affiliate products. Depends what your site is, you know. Um, you'd have to make that decision yourself based on what your main money site is doing. So this looks a little bit different, you see, because we've got different words. And, okay, if we share this one, do it as a download. Right-click, save image as, Word Cloud 2. Now I've got another one which looks slightly different. That's what the other one looked like. Okay. Uh, and what I can do now, let's add another page. So we'll call it second sample. And let's add the media. So this is Word Cloud 2 that I'm going to upload. I'm doing this fairly quickly because you've seen me do it now. I just want you to see the end result. And I'm not linking to anything and I'm using medium. Uh, and I'll put it to the right this time. 
and insert it into the page. Now depending on the theme you use on your website, you may be able to set featured images. And you can do this on a page or a post, it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to put the featured image here as the image I've just uploaded. So what I've got now is a featured image, let me publish that page for you. Um, just one second for me because I've got a very long question. Uh, Sean, send me a, a, an email with that. It's a rather too long a question for me to answer here for you, uh, and then I'll deal with it. If you send me an email, then let me know, okay? Uh, and then I'll answer it because it's far too long to to do that here. Let me just uh, give you the email address. Okay, doke. There you go. Okay. So what I've got now? Did I save that? I can't remember. Um, let's have a look at this page. So that looks very different, doesn't it? Very different, and it's quite engaging. Anybody coming here, I can put it at the top, the bottom, the middle, wherever. So what I've got is an opportunity to create as many images as I want for my blogs and my reports. Let me just show you in Word, okay? Let's pretend for the sake of argument that I have actually rewritten that earlier research that I did. What I can now do in fact, I'll do this full screen for you. I can insert a picture from my downloads. Uh, let's do Word Cloud 2 because I like that one best. And I can now put this into my reports. So I can use these images that I've created for free with content from Content Ferret on my blog. I can use them in reports. I can put them anywhere that I'm allowed to post an image, okay? If I want to, I can also get people pin, pinning them with Pinterest and that kind of a thing. And I can create short videos as well if I wanted to do that. If there's time, I'm going to get into that for you later. Um, we're kind of... It's, it's, everything's taken a little bit longer than I expected because there's just so much that you can do with this. But I'll try to show you about videos as well. So we've got a very nice image there. One trick that you can do if you have lots of chapters, is you can resize the image in Word. Okay, and then what you can do if you want to, uh, you can change the text wrapping. Uh, let's do through, there we go. Just space that a little, and then that can become effectively the introductory image for each chapter. So there's a number of different ways you can use these images and you generate the images with the words from Content Ferret or any words of your own. I mean, it doesn't have to be just Content Ferret. In fairness, you can do that from anywhere. So if you have a lot of existing content, you can do the same trick with this, which is really cool. And these are fully yours. You can sell them. You can use them on all your blogs. You can do what you like. So you're wanting a link for that particular website. Uh, let me give you that in the text box, which I think I gave early, but here we go. So the link I've just given you now is where you can create these word images. And you use them wherever you like. In fact, uh, let me just see if big stock. Okay, so let's have a look at word cloud. See what we get. And there are people who are selling these images. In some cases for a dollar. You know, you can create a lot of them. You could even turn it into a, a revenue generation stream for yourself if you wanted to, because people buy these. And you can see a lot of these look the same. Some are slightly different shapes, of course, um, but a lot of them are very similar. And all this is, is putting these words in, in a particular frequency, so that the most important words come out biggest. And that can be done from this website totally free, as long as you've got some content to put into here. You notice they do want 5,000 minimum characters. If you've only got a couple of hundred words, well, when you copy this, all you have to do is paste it, paste it again, and if necessary, paste it again. And that will multiply how many characters you have, and then it will visualize your text. Now, what I'm going to do is just do this one more time, uh, because there's a different type of 
word cloud that this offers you so that you can ring the changes. It doesn't have to be just this standard type. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. So we'll just go through the different types here, the square root, linear, exponential. You can see that makes it very small text for the minor words and very big for the other. The layout, uh, let's have a look. You've got circular, rectangular, refresh, and then we have concept web. Now concept web, I don't personally like, but you might find it useful. Uh, you know, it's linking each word to a related word. You might want to put that on your site. I don't like this myself. The correlation wheel, again, I'm not a big fan of the way that looks personally. I don't think it's particularly engaging. It's more of a serious scientific thing. Uh, if you're having trouble with the audio, hopefully this will come back in a moment for you. So, another thing you can do is take this content, edited content, remember, and you can create some PowerPoint or Keynote or LibreOffice presentations. And then from there you can turn it into a video. Now I've got PowerPoint open, so I'm going to use the free LibreOffice to show you a good way and a quick way of using some of this content. So let me just go into LibreOffice. Uh, before I do, I'll very quickly see if these have been rewritten for me. Okay. So this one's been rewritten, my nutrition. So let's have a look at that. So here's the article. Let me just scroll down for you. So this is the article that was rewritten for me. I've now got what should be a totally unique article. I'm going to test it in Copyscape for you. I've got to freeze the screen while I log into Copyscape, just bear with me. So that will just take me a couple of moments to log in and then I'll actually show you a live search to see if there is any matching content. I'm just logging in now and I can remember my password. One advantage of uh, <coughs> having lots of passwords is that not many people are likely to be able to hack you, but uh, you tend to forget what they are. <laughs> so here's I Need Articles. Let me reshow the screen again. So this is Healthy Nutrition, so I'm going to copy the article. 527 words. I'm going to put it into Copyscape. I'll paste it in and I'm going to do a search now within Copyscape to see if it is actually unique. So when I hit premium search, it's going to go off to the search for me. No results found. I have a unique article. Uh, and let me just show you that. I'll just tidy up the pages a little. So I can take that article, copy it. I can paste it into my blog. Let me do that right now. Okay. That would be the article title, I guess, really. That would make sense. And if I update this page, I'm going to show you what this page looks like now. And you see how easy it was to get that content rewritten for me, how easy it was to generate the article image, and so on. So here's the article. I'm going to leave it on screen so you can read it. You can see what it sounds like and so on. What is healthy nutrition? When it comes to eating right, there is a lot of conflicting information available online. How can you figure out what is right and what is off base? We've collected some of the best information from experts on the topic so that you don't have to look further than this article. To begin with, your body needs all of the food groups you, food groups you need to keep going strong. That means you can't just cut out one in the hopes of losing weight or being healthier, and then so on. So what I've got now is a great article. I've got a nice image. I can turn this into a video which I can put onto YouTube and then point back to this site. Because it's a Google property, YouTube is owned by Google, the backlink from Google is very beneficial. They like that you embed their videos in your blogs. So I could embed that YouTube video on here, which means I'd have the written content, which is going to get picked up by Google for indexing. They can see the words. They can also then uh, see that I'm using a YouTube video which is embedded, which helps that particular channel, and of course that would be my channel. 
then I get a link back within the description of the YouTube channel back to this website. So I'm getting a valuable link. So that content, what I've created very quickly, is giving me several different benefits. Now I'm getting a ton of people asking me to show you the video process. I can't because it will take me too long, but I'll try to. Um, if there's time, I will try to do that. But at the moment, I want you to understand that we can take this content and reuse it. So the time we spent rewriting or the few dollars we spent having it rewritten is multiplied. We get more than one use out of it. Okay? And um, what you're seeing here was manually rewritten by a real person, a writer at INeedArticles.com. Let's just have a look if the other one's been done. Uh, might be, possibly. It would be nice if the other one's finished for weight loss. Not yet. That might be a little bit more research required. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, and I'm still working with the same article, uh, let me just copy it in fact, because I need the content again. So let me just copy all that content again. I'm going to go into LibreOffice, and I'm going to start creating my video, or my presentation. And what I would do is actually put in individual snippets from that, that I've just had rewritten, into each of these slides, okay? So let's have a look. I'll go back to INeedArticles.com. Uh, yeah, something like this. So I'll take the first one, go into LibreOffice, click to add text, because that's what it says. And then, as you see, it's a few seconds, just size it the way you want. Do you want it to be centered? Do you want it to be you know, you can make it left aligned, up here, centered, right aligned, justified, whatever you want, okay? And then you'd duplicate the slide, take some more content. Uh, I like this one on its own, that sentence, and I could turn this into a really long video if I wanted to. So, you know, I could make an hours long video out of this if I wanted. Duplicate the slide again take a little bit more of the content, and you can take as much of this as you like, or as little. And that means you can also do teaser content. Now this is, you know, we're talking about several kind of advanced topics here. And all I'm doing is copy and pasting from my rewritten article, putting the spacing that I want, and then I've got a slideshow. So let me actually do the slideshow for you now. So I would do a voiceover here. LibreOffice is a free kind of, it's, it's a bit like Microsoft Office, but it's a free version and it has a presentation uh, module in it. So you can create presentations like this. So if you were doing a YouTube video, you'd maybe do a little voiceover. Weight loss, video one. When it comes to eating right, there's a lot of conflicting information available online. And the question is, how can you figure out what's right and what isn't? I've collected some really great information from experts so that you don't have to look any further. Let's start off by telling you that your body needs all of the food groups you need to keep you going strong. And that means you can't just cut out one food group in the hope of losing weight or being healthy. Even groups like carbohydrates should be eaten in moderation and you do need to eat them daily. End of presentation. Now look, I've only done a short thing there, but you get the point that I could create an entire presentation. I could then use screen capture software um, and create a video for YouTube. Uh, LibreOffice is a more updated version than OpenOffice. Now let me talk about paying money for different uh, systems. You can pay a lot of money for Camtasia, or you can use something called ScreenR.com and just record your screen. I'll show you that particular website. So you can record up to five minutes of your LibreOffice presentation for free, download the video to your file, your computer, and then you've got the video ready to put onto your YouTube channel, link back to your main money site, and all of a sudden the content you've created is now available in a different format. It's in video and audio. It's creating a valuable link for you, and you can put the video by embedding it within your own blog. So let me actually do that with YouTube, because uh, I was asked if I could do show that for you. 
So I'm going to, I've got a little, you know, a channel here and we've got some uh, funny ones that happened. That one, 87,000 views where I just made some French fries. I mean, it's ridiculous to think that that many people would, would watch that, but let's have a look. So let's embed this. Um, oh no, I can't on that one because I've stopped embedding, but anyway, let me choose another one, this one. I'm doing this very quickly, okay, so I just want to show you. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm taking this uh, code from YouTube, I go to my page, and honestly, a video about a camera in the middle of healthy nutrition doesn't make sense, but I'm doing this quickly just to show you, okay? Let's have a look. Uh, I've embedded it there, I'm updating. And now what I have is a multimedia, rich content, blog post or blog page. I have an image, I have text, I have a video, I've got content. It took me literally seconds, didn't it? Now, you know, please use your own videos that relate to your content. I kept saying use related content today. I've done this quickly to show you because I don't have any health videos uh, that I can show you here. Okay, that was just a sample video. Uh, <laughs> I'm being told it took too long to embed the video. <laughs> well, you know, I was talking. It's quicker normally, to be fair. Uh, so let me get rid of YouTube. But the other thing about this is that the page here is now giving me a link back to my YouTube channel. I'm linking back to my own YouTube channel. And on my YouTube channel, in the description, I can have a link or several links to anything I like. And those links are valuable. As long as you're not stupid about it, let me just emphasize this. The people who cannot be bothered to take the effort of a few seconds to do the work to make things a little bit more valuable will fail. If you spend a little bit of time and give some valuable content, your links will work. Okay? Simple. It's a simple rule that goes all the way back to the beginning when I gave you rules one, two, and three. So quality really does pay off in the end. It takes a few minutes, but you know what? If you've got a site that's in the evergreen niche, you might be looking at, you know, good results from, from that for years and years to come. So the effort's well worth it. Do you need to upload video to YouTube to get an embed code? Uh, if it's your own video, you do. You do. Um, you definitely have to upload the video if you want to do your own. If you wanted to link to somebody else's, then the content, uh, you know, the link would already be there. So I've shown you a demo of the word cloud. I've shown you very quickly about YouTube. Uh, and I've shown you that we've got this thing called LibreOffice, which can create a presentation. You can record that with free software, ScreenR.com, to create a video. You don't have to have a voiceover. It makes it nice if you do, uh, but you know, you don't have to. Many people just put videos with a little bit of background music rather than speech. You've got the text on screen. You've then got a video, you've got rich content. You can embellish your actual uh, blog post and page because you're giving people content in different ways and therefore they can consume the content in the way that suits them. Okay, they may not want to read a thousand words. They might prefer somebody to tell them on a video. Somebody may prefer to read very quickly rather than listen to an entire video. So by having both, you, you cater for everybody. Now, the permission for the YouTube videos depends on the video. If it's your own video, you do what you like. Okay, if it's your own video, your choice. Now, if it's somebody else's, generally speaking, if they have an embed code available, it means they're allowing it to be used anywhere. Yes, there will be a replay, Lenny. Yeah, there will. And I'll send out the email for you on that. So we talked about the uh, images which we looked at, the word cloud images. These are quite nice. A little bit of fun. You can uh, beef up your reports as well and your videos if you wanted to. You can also use them within LibreOffice. I didn't do that, but let me do that now. Uh, let me insert. Uh, an image, a picture from a file, and we're going to do the downloads. There we go. Word cloud one, I think, on this one. And maybe resize it, you know, just move it around a little. 
Uh, and I'm getting a ton of questions. I'll get to them in a second, everybody. It's just taking me a few seconds to, to get to them because they're coming in rather quick at the moment. So I will try to get to uh, everybody's question as soon as I can. So let me just move that slightly out of the way. So you could do things like this, you see. You could even enhance your presentation. Um, you know, and all these things give people a richer experience when they're on your site. When they're on your site, there's something called bounce rate. I don't want to get technical, but if they leave your site quickly, it's bad for search engine rankings. If you keep them on your site for longer, it's good for search engine rankings. If you give them things to look at, especially video, people stay on your site for longer. Fact. Simple. Simple as that. Okay? So, all this stuff is about enhancing what you give to people. And I'm just going to tidy up a little bit now, get rid of some of these pages. And what we did was we started with the content within Content Ferret. We then used it to create some uh, nice Word images, and then we put it onto LibreOffice, and so on. So let me just go back to my dashboard, and I'm going to have a look if this is finished. Uh, maybe the weight loss experts aren't on at the moment. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'll come back again to that in a few minutes. So let me take your questions. How do you get the words for the image? Uh, we actually did that with um, a site called Text is Beautiful. That's this site, and I'm going to put that again in the chat box for you so that you can all see that, and it should show up now. So that's where you can create this for free, and those images are yours to do with as you please. Uh, okay, can I tell you more about the functionality of content for it? Sure. So, what we've done is we've had a look at the different niches and topics. We've had a look at some of the content that's re uh, returned when you do a search. We've looked at snippets. We've assembled research in different categories. We've downloaded a Spintax version that you, you would use with something like the Best Spinner. Uh, we've actually sent some research over to INeedArticles.com to be rewritten. And essentially what we've done is cut down our research time, including thinking about subtopics and subsections and layout and so on. We've cut it down from what could potentially be hours down to what should be minutes. Now the rewriting does take a few minutes if you do it yourself, but you can use INeedArticles.com. And your snippets here, I've got uh, just over 1,100 words of research in this example. If there are some that I don't like, I can remove them. Let's do that one. Let's remove it, and so on. I can rewrite it myself. And what it's doing is giving me a guided structure for the individual uh, paragraphs and the individual subtopics. What I would do is, you know, deal with whatever I want to put in here in my own words and then when I've finished the rewriting which I can do on the web so this is Mac and PC and even tablet remember what I can then do when I've finished is download the article or I can use the spin format to put this into Spintax format for my rewritten article so I can rewrite the article and then create a Spintax version as well so tremendously powerful and by the time you've gone through all these different facilities, let me just clean the window a little bit. Uh, almost anything you can imagine, you can do. So again, tons of questions, so I'm just going to slow down for a second. Can the article be automatically uploaded to your website? No. Right now, the answer is no. Um, I'm not sure whether that will ever be added, Alex, honestly. Um, I personally wouldn't want to see that. I think you do need to uh, do some editing. And I think the problem is, if you make it too easy for people to upload it, they'll do it without changing anything. They won't get the benefits, then they're going to come back and badmouth us. And all that happens is they're wasting their own time and money. So there needs to be a pause where you take a few minutes to make the article your own, make it better. And that's really what drives this and gives it the power. How long does it take to generate an article in INeedArticle.com? Generally speaking, the manual rewrite you'd probably get it back within 24 hours. Uh, is there an automatic article submission option? Not sure what you mean about that, Adnan, if you can just clarify for me. And you want to see the list of topics, I'm going to leave that there for you. 
Uh, we don't have, or I don't have a list of the topics that will be added shortly, um, but they will be on there, and if I can get hold of them, if I can get that list, I will send it out with the replay, Will. Dan's asking a really great question. If I rewrite this myself, do I follow the same sentences in the paragraph and rewrite in my own words, or do I do more than that? I would actually chop and change a little bit, because what I find when I put these uh, into the snippet box, that's this thing over here, Sometimes I change my mind about the sequence I would like it in, because as I'm reading and thinking about it, I can see a more logical sequence. And when you start chopping things around like that, not only is it a better flow, so it's good for your visitors, it makes it even more unique. So I personally would tend to chop and change a little bit, but it depends on how much of the article you're rewriting, how many snippets you've got in there. You know, it's not a definite yes or no. A lot depends on the exact nature of what you're doing. And remember, we haven't even looked at blog commenting yet. You can take some of these snippets, rewrite them, and use them to help you with blog commenting, which is one way of getting links. Uh, okay. Can I show the subcategories under internet marketing? Absolutely. Let me go to that. And I'll scroll down, scroll down so you can see that. So there's a lot here. Let me leave those there for a moment. Then I'll go forward with the paging button and you can see the rest. Uh, and you also, and somebody else wants to see the options within finance. Okay, I'll do that as well. Uh, okay. So we've also got these subcategories. Marketing strategy, affiliate marketers, money making, network marketing, domain name, search engine optimization, small business, business owners, residual income, business model, marketing tools. Okay, I'm getting quite a few people wanting to see different ones, so I'm going to go back to finance, which was there, and let's just show you the subtopics here. And we get 25 to a page, and we've got multiple pages, so I'll leave that there for a second. I will do jewelry next, John. Um, and legal, okay. Adnan's confused about the uniqueness question. Um, if you can give me an exact question, Adnan, I'll try to answer it for you, but I'm not quite sure what you're asking me, so, um, you know. So I'll just do one more page of the finance. We've got currency trading, free debt, car loan, unsecured loans, loan amount, foreign exchange, debt consolidation loan, and so on. We've got uh, jewellery somebody wanted to look at. So there's jewellery. And uh, legal we want to look at. We'll look at that in a moment. But you can see there's, in each of the categories, there's quite a number of subtopics. I've got a question which I'll answer for Dennis in a couple of seconds. It's a good question. Uh, it's a big question, but it's a good one, and I should be able to give you a reasonably simple answer for that. So that's jewellery, and we wanted to look at, or some of jewellery, there's more to come, of course. And then we want to look at legal uh, here. So let's have a look at the subtopics there. Identity theft's a big one. Public records, background checks, criminal records. Uh, personal injury, defense, yeah, these are big ones, you know. Uh, there will be a replay, Ted, yes, I'll email everybody about that. Okay. Just do one more page on legal. Now, when is duplicate content okay and when is it bad? Is it okay in multiple money sites? Uh, is it okay on my site plus others that I don't, I, I don't own? Is it okay within one site? Okay. Here's the simplest uh, kind of formula. On your money sites, do not have duplicate content at all. Okay? Do not have duplicate content. That's simple. On your money sites, all unique. Remember, apart from Google, there are other things to think about, which is you are having somebody land on your money site. You need to give them good content, well-written and valuable, to keep them on the site. So your top quality content goes on your money site. If you came to my site and saw 15 pages with the exact same content, that would be wasting your time, and you'd wonder why I didn't just put it on one page. So duplicate content on a money site is generally a bad idea for your site visitor, but it's also a bad idea for Google. Now, some degree of duplication is okay on some types of links. I don't want to get into this fully, but there are different types of links. We call it tiered linking. 
And some of the, the outer tiers are less sensitive and you can have a little bit more duplication in there. But I, I, I don't really want to get into that too much because that's like a two hour discussion. Um, but there is room for some duplication. But, you know, 100% duplication is never particularly a good idea. And one of the problems that I've seen with duplication is that it generally has poor quality as well because people who have that kind of duplicated content can't be bothered to create good content. Bad content and duplication seem to go hand in hand because the type of person who does it can't be bothered. Does that make sense? So generally speaking, a little bit of effort, that's what you need. Okay, now I'm looking for um, health. Let's look at health in fitness and somebody was asking if we have anything on yoga let's have a look uh, and then there were some others somebody wants to see if there's anything about oh gosh it's gone way back up to the top okay I'll have a look in a second for that so we've got some uh, yoga in there there's not a tremendous amount but there's a little bit and somebody was asking uh, skincare yes we'll have a look at skincare in a moment for you let me just have a look at I Need Articles while we're waiting for that to reload. Okay, still not being done, so we'll come back to this. And we're going to continue in a moment, and I'm going to just expand on the, the content again, because content is used in different ways. But for yoga, we've got 6,400 snack snippets. That's quite a lot, you know, so you've got lots of yoga. And somebody was asking about dating. Well, I don't know if uh, that's ever going to be in there, quite honestly. Um, I don't think it will be. But, you know, I don't know what category it will be in. Uh, photography. Let's have a look at photography. Get rid of yoga for a moment. And look at photography, which is one I'm interested in. So there we go. Digital cameras, digital photography, wedding photography, DSLRs, photography tips. Okay, I'll look at skincare in a moment for you. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go quickly on the uh, digital cameras now because you've got an idea. There's lots in there, as you can see. Skincare was... Ooh, here we go. Here's your skincare. That's page one. Manuka honey, vitamin C, anti-wrinkle, fight essence, wakame, uh, synergy TK, face cream... Skin condition, mineral oil, fatty acids, eye cream, acne scars, natural oils, free radicals. Uh, there's a lot in here. Uh, skin types, functional keratin. I know that's a skincare thing. Uh, green tea, skin lightening, apple cider vinegar, cellulite cream, salicylic acid. There's a lot there. Okay, so I'll leave this here. I'm not going to show every single category and subcategory because it, it, you know, it's just going to take me too long. Uh, and I know everybody wants to look at their particular one. But let me look at the questions because they've scrolled by so fast. I want to make sure I get the questions that you've got, if I can. So let me just scroll down. Answer those. Uh, okay, what's the website? Okay, where can you transform an article into a video? Well, what you would do is you would use the, the screen site that I've put into the chat box right now and you would use something like LibreOffice or PowerPoint or Keynote and create a presentation which you would go through and you'd actually record the presentation from your screen using ScreenR.com. Uh, I've put the link in the chat box and I will put all these links in the replay of course. Uh, and then you've got a video which you can then upload to YouTube, you can put it onto your website. You could even create videos to sell if you wanted to. Okay. Is it better to you? Oh, this is a good question. Is it better to use the exact same text content in video form or rewrite the original article before creating the video? Good question, Arthur. I love that question. For video, at the moment, uh, Google don't yet have a way, as far as I know, of indexing the video image for text. So I would use the same text. However, what you might have noticed when I did that sample voiceover. I used different words. Now Google do have voice recognition. So I would actually say something different on screen uh, to what's on screen. And I do that for two reasons. One is that Google, if they do a voice recognition, will see new content. 
but my visitors are more likely to pay attention because they're seeing one set of information and they're hearing another. I'm delivering the message in what's known as multimodality. I'm, I'm actually delivering a message on two different levels at the same time. I'm engaging more of my audience. The people who are visual will read the text. The people who are, you know, like to listen will listen to me. And then I can give kind of a, a double whammy on the content. So I would use the same content text in the video, but I would actually say something a little bit different. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, okay, just some more. I've got to scroll down, so you have to bear with me because there's a lot there. Uh, Adnan, I understand your question now. Uploading to multiple blogs, spun article vision, uh, versions with the click of a button. Um, it's possible, but that may be something that you hear about in a few weeks. Um, that's all I can say. But th the answer to your question is yes, but not within content ferried, and you're not going to hear about it for a few weeks. So yes, it will be possible to upload to multiple blogs and spin a version for each of those blogs at the click of a button, but not today. Now, um, what happens if someone copies your content? Mm, that's a good question. What happens if somebody copies your content from the money site? Well, if you're first and you've, you, you've, you know, you've been indexed, it may be that you retain that. It depends what the other people do. I mean, if you're actively searching for people stealing your content, you can serve them with a notice to take it down. You talk to their web hosts. Um, but it's always possible, possible for people to outrank you by doing more of the things that count. Let me say that again. It is possible for people to outrank you by doing more of the things that count. Now think about that for a moment. That means it's possible for you to outrank other people by doing more of the things that count. You just have to work smarter, not harder, so that you can do more of it in the time that you have available. And this is where the whole thing about working smart comes in. If you can do 10 times as much of the site building and the site promotion in the same time, you're going to get a lot higher results because you've done more of the things that count. It's, it's obvious. It's very, very simple. Um, okay, Cheryl, if you send that to uh, the normal place, let me just give you an email for that. There you go. Cheryl's got a long question that she wants to sell privately. Okay, uh, the lifetime bonus, I will come to that in a couple of seconds for you. Can you build PowerPoint with OpenOffice? Yeah, it's not called PowerPoint, Raymond. OpenOffice and LibreOffice have what they call, uh, I think it's called the presentation tool, uh, but you can certainly build a PowerPoint type presentation, absolutely. Uh, what do I think about embedded hyperlinks in your articles? Barry, it depends where you put them. Embedded hyperlinks within your article are known as contextual links and are great to have if they relate to valuable content about that topic. Let me say that again. An embedded hyperlink in your article, if you're allowed to use it, is a great thing to have because it's within the context of the topic. And if you're linking out to something that is related, it's a natural and organic way of doing it. You just have to be careful not to use a money keyword every time. What you do is you use a kind of an organic keyword, like click here, read here for more information. This is the original site the article came from. This article has a lot of good information, just click here, that kind of a thing. Okay? So, one last check to see if that article's been rewritten, but you've seen the point. You've seen an article that has been rewritten, so that's fine. Um, it was pretty good. We put it on this site here. If you want to look at that site, I'm going to leave it on for the moment. That is what the article is like. That's a rewritten article. It's unique. I went to Copyscape. I checked it. There are no results for that article. I've had it rewritten through iNeedArticles.com. I've got a unique article. I've posted it onto my website. Sorry, this page. I've embedded an image that I created for free in 10 seconds. I've embedded a video. Well, just an example video, of course. I've got a rich page. I could even put the video higher up so that people see it immediately. I could move this further down if I wanted. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, 
what I would do is remove the featured image, update. On this theme, the featured image comes off at the top, so I could get rid of that and make it look like this. Health and Nutrition, above the fold, I can see a video. This is called Above the Fold here. It's something that my visitors will see as soon as they land on the page. They click on this, they start watching the video, and then they're on my site for two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, however long. Okay. So let me just tidy up a little bit. So we've got rid of the sample word cloud there. We did some searching for research and I had a look in a Word document and started assembling research to show you how I would do this manually. I'm going to come out of here now. I'm not going to save it. I'll get rid of the Google search. This website I'll leave here for a moment. This is where you can create your images for free. You can even sell them. You can put a bundle of them together create a nice article and bundle the images. You could even create a short report to sell on if you wanted, or you can keep it for yourself, for your money sites, do whatever you like. And we've done all of that from Content Ferret and the snippets of information that we assembled from all these different topics here. Now the lifetime bonus, which it shows here, you get instant article wizard for free. So let me just uh, come back to the demonstration for a moment, okay, because I've got some more information to share with you. So, something for you to remember, and it's absolutely true, you've heard it a million times, content is king. But lousy content is only the king of a small country with a tiny population. It's not much use these days. People are more savvy than they were, and they click away from junk really fast. I mean, you do, right? You do. If you see junky content, you don't spend an hour on that website, do you? You do not waste your time on it. Nobody else is going to waste their time. Junk is junk, and people are well aware of it. Never mind Google. Your site visitors know when there's junk, and they don't want to stick around. So content is king if it's good. Now, Google and the other search engines don't like junk, so you have to feed them what they want to stand a chance of ranking well in the engines. Get your content right on your site and get it right in your links and you have a powerful combination and that drives your sites up this search engine ladder. Now junky links are just as bad as junky content. The content. A junky link is one that adds no value to the web. But if you're publishing lots of quality content, the links you will get from that are not junky. They count. They actually count because quality does count. And since you need to have a variety of links, like blog comments, web pages, web2 properties, Squidoo, hub pages, blogger blogs, wordpress.com blogs, document sharing sites, you need a ton of content to fill them. That is extra content on top of the content that you need for your money sites. It is all about the content. Content is king. People say it for a reason. Okay? <laughs> it's... It's there for a reason, because it's true. It is a lot of content, and you need a lot of content, and you have to publish it regularly. Remember what I said earlier? You have to do the work. Those people who don't do the work do not get the results. Now, whether you do it yourself, or you pay someone, that's fine. But the work has to be done. Okay? So, what you've seen, the two essential things that you need to do for your money sites. You've seen that it takes a lot of work to do them manually, but that's good. That is good because most of your competition can't be bothered to do it, okay? Most of your competition will pump out junk day after day after day. But some of your competition is going to pump out quality day after day, and the only way that you can compete with them is to work smarter, not harder. You could, you've, got to, you've got to pump out quality yourself. Very obvious, very simple. Now you can spend a couple of hours, if you're lucky, doing basic research like I showed you. Then you create an article from scratch. Or if you want, you can spend the same time. And what you can do is end up with two or three or maybe even five articles or more in the same time. That investment of time, and make no mistake, it is an investment. To edit that research material that you get from Content Ferret, it pays dividends. If you don't put in that little bit of time, you don't get the, effort, you don't get the results. So don't waste time. Because that's something you'll never recover. You've got to multiply the results you get by using your time in an efficient way. I'm getting a couple of questions. Let me just answer them very quickly. Uh, there you go, Dave. That's the uh, 
answer for you. So work smarter, not harder, like I keep saying, but remember, you don't even have to edit this material yourself. If you do have an I Need Articles account, and you can get one straight away, and then just pay when you use it, it's dead simple. You can send the research that you've chosen straight to the I Need Articles account, and then get some rewrites done for you. So let's just have a quick look at that again, see if we can see it. Um, so I've only got the one, but that's fine, you know, it, it, uh, the others were rewritten earlier. I'll show you this one, this uh, previous weight loss that I did earlier today. And if I just make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. There's another one. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll do this on uh, Copyscape, shall I? Okay, let me f just freeze while I log in again because it's logged out. And what I'm going to do is just log in and then show you the screen again. And this is one that I did earlier. Uh, so this is a weight loss one that I did earlier today. Let's have a look to see if this is unique. So this is one that was rewritten for me. All I did was click the button to send it to ineedarticles.com. And what I've got is a unique article. Very quick, very simple, very easy. And it's there in my dashboard. As simple as that. Now, I'm being asked if I need to copy scape every time. No, I'm only doing that to show you because we're on a demonstration, Martin. So that's that's the reason I'm showing you. But you don't need if you're sending it to ineedarticles.com, it's got to pass copy scape before it gets to you. And uh, therefore you don't need to do that. I'm only doing it to show it to you as a demonstration. So in a world where Google themselves are telling you that content is king and links to that content count in the search results. Doing what works really is kind of the only sensible action. Right? It's, it's the only thing that makes sense. You've got to do the things that work to get it to work. So today ahead of that official launch, because officially Content Ferry is launching on Monday, you can get into it today a little bit earlier and there's a lifetime license opportunity. Now the lifetime license is $247 and it's only going to be available for a limited time. You've already got over a million articles in there tens of millions of snippets. As you've seen, we looked at quite a lot in there, and it's growing. You can use this on a Mac and a PC. It's web-based, and that means you could even, if you wanted to, you could even do this on a tablet, like an iPad or Samsung Galaxy Tab or whatever. Um, but it doesn't matter what you're using, you can, you can cover this with whatever machine you're on. It's simple to use, as you've seen, and it fully integrates into I Need Articles, if you've got an account with I Need Articles. Uh, it's actually open now, so you, you pay once and you can use it from now on with no further payments. As new topics are added and new article snippets, you'll get those automatically. Um, I can't give you an answer to the question that I've just been asked of how frequently. Um, I will get an answer for you for the replay, uh, but all the app updates that are added will come in automatically. Now, you also get, with the lifetime license, a lifetime license for Instant Article Wizard. This is what our Instant Article Wizard looks like. Now, Instant Article Wizard is a research tool that takes a bit more manual work. You've got to be open with you about that. It takes a bit more manual work, but it's very powerful. And this can cover topics that may not be in Content Ferret. Very powerful in its own right, so it's a great companion software. And if you do some research, I've done an example one there for weight loss. This is what it looks like. You get all these different articles down here. When you click on an individual subtopic, You'll see articles from the web here. You can use these for research. You just click on them and it builds up into an article on this tab. You can then rewrite it. And then once you've done that, you can use it as your link building content or your money site content or whatever. It's pretty simple to use. You get this automatically included with the lifetime purchase of Content Ferret. It is a Windows application, but it can work on Macs if you use something like Bootcamp or Parallels, um, so mainly for Windows, but you could make it work on a Mac if you have access to those other systems. Now the regular price for Instant Article Wizard is $77 annually, so it's not a bad bonus, you know, and you get that as a lifetime bonus, but there will be no do-overs, so once the lifetime deal's gone, then it's gone. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you the lifetime deal, so that's included at $77 a year. Here's the special link for the lifetime version of Content Ferret. I'm actually going to paste that into uh, the, the window for you. 
Uh, so if you just bear with me, I'll put it in the chat box. And what I will do is actually go to that. So if we go to that page, it will take you directly to the payment page. You can check out with PayPal and you will get your lifetime bonus of Instant Article Wizard automatically delivered. Okay, pay with your PayPal account, dead simple. You get it fairly quickly. Now I've got a couple of questions. I will come back to those in a moment. So that's the lifetime on Content Ferret. It's only going to be available uh, until next week. So you need to go there and take advantage of the deal pricing now so you can start generating the type of content you want. Um, bear in mind that your competitors are going to be using content generation strategies. Your competitors are going to be using link building strategies. You have to do what works in order to get the success that comes from doing what works. And the two simple things I told you about are really simple to do, but they are hard work if you do them manually. That's creating content and link building. If you can create your content faster, you can do all the rest of the things you need to do faster, you get results faster, and you can keep yourself on that kind of legal track where Google are likely to give you rewards with better search engine rankings rather than penalizing you by throwing you down the search engine. Remember the quality counts. If you use it to put a ton of spam and junk out there, you will not succeed. So the tiny bit of effort that I've asked you to make is an investment in yourself and your own money site. And it's one of the things that will distinguish you from people who fail.